Okay, so today we will work on the last section of the chapter 12. That is the solution of wave equation in covariant form and invariant Green's function. So Green's function is very important because with the help of the Green's function we will derive the uh, four potential that will be the solution of the four dimensional uh, wave equation and using this we will study the uh, radiation from uh, accelerated charge. So basically our point so that will be the preparation for the chapter 14. So let us write the Maxwell's equations for the sources. So alpha is contracted, beta is the free index. So you can write this field strength tensor in terms of the derivatives of the four potential. So del alpha A beta, del beta A alpha, which is equal to four pi over C J beta. So add this operator to the inside, then inside the parentheses, then you will have del alpha alpha A beta and act this one and replace the derivatives. It doesn't, we can do this. Uh, we can replace the derivatives, they commute. So del alpha A alpha, which is equal to four pi over C J beta. So one thing you know that this term is the continuity of, uh, sorry, this term is the continuity of the four potential or, or, or under the Lorentz condition, you know that that is equal to zero. And this is nothing but the four dimensional uh, Laplace operator and and this turns to be the following. So basically at the end we will find the four potential by the solution of this non-homogeneous uh, wave equation with the four current density on the right hand side and how we solve this. The standard rule to solve this by letting to the right hand side is a source as in the form of the delta function. So we will define the four dimensional delta function x minus x prime on the right hand side. This is equal to this is equal to delta x0 minus x0 prime for the time coordinate and for the space we can write x minus x prime. So this is the four dimensional delta function on the right hand side of the equation and if the source is the delta function then the solution is the Green's function. So let me denote this as a x, x prime, x, x prime are the four dimensional space time and this operator, four dimensional Laplace operator will act to the axis. So basically today we will find, try to find this d, d is the Green's function. If you know that the d we can solve very easily the four potential. So let us define the quantities. So basically, basically we can define the difference of the four <coughs> vector. So let's say z alpha. And then, so the Green's function is related with the x minus x prime and then the form of the Green's function will be in the following form. Then the wave equation for the delta source will be the, in the following form. 
z is equal to uh, x alpha minus x alpha prime. So the standard rule for solving the Green's function use the tools of the Fourier transform. So let us define the Fourier transform or inverse Fourier transform. We can write dz is 1 over 2 pi to the 4 e to the 4, 4 dimensional wave number. The Fourier transform of the Green's function e to the minus i k dot z. K dot Z is the scalar product of the four vector wave number and the space and time. So basically, this is the inverse Fourier transform, and you can write the Fourier transform or the inverse Fourier transform. So basically, take this and plug inside the plug inside the uh, wave equation with the delta function. So basically the situation will be the following but before going to do this let us define that the four dimensional delta function in terms of Fourier transform that is equal to 1 over 2 pi to the fourth d to the four k e to the minus i k dot z and k dot z is k0 z0 minus k dot z. So take this, plug inside and take this and plug there and then the our equation will be in the following form. 1 over 2 pi to the fourth and due to the 4 and Fourier transform of the Green's function e to the minus i k dot z so this is nothing but dz And on the right hand side, delta function in four dimension could be written as one over two pi to the fourth power d to the four k e to the minus i k dot z. So basically, you can take the this four dimensional Laplacian operator. That will x to the only the exponential because this is depending on the k. And if this x to the, the exponential, and you will get the following. So basically, this operator acting to the e to the i k dot z will be what? What? So k dot z is here. So you will take the derivative with respect to the what? time coordinate and space coordinates two times so that will bring down to the what uh, if you take that the derivative with respect to the z so this will be first derivative will bring the minus i k down and the second one that will bring another minus i k so that will be the following minus i k dot minus i k and the form doesn't change. Okay, so basically this will act to the exponential and it will bring down to the minus i k dot minus i k dot and minus minus plus and i and i minus so that will be minus k dot k e to the minus i k dot z. So basically the left hand side of the equation could be written now 1 over 2 pi to the 4th power d to the 4 k and Fourier transform of the Green's function and we have this term minus i k dot 
k, not i, k dot k minus k dot k, exponential e to the i k dot z. On the right hand side, we have 1 over 2 pi to the fourth, d to the fourth of k, e to the minus i k dot z. Okay? And if you compare the left and, and the right hand side, you have d to the 4k exponential e to the ik dot z. But here, you have this stuff. And therefore, this stuff over here should be 1. Okay? If they are equal to each other, this should be 1. Then that means that the Fourier transform of the Green's function is minus 1 over k dot k. Now we are starting to playing our game today. We will solve this. Okay? We will find that the inverse Fourier transform of this and we will find that the Green's function. So the rest of this today will be the integration. So this is the idea. Maxwell's equations, Maxwell's equations in terms of the potentials, Lorentz condition, we have non-homogeneous wave equation, and the tool is to find that what is the Green's function. Therefore, you can put to the right hand side the source as a delta function and try to solve the <coughs> Green's function. And other tools are the Fourier transform, and we have the now Green's function for Fourier transform of the Green's function here, and we have to find that the uh, Green's function, which is depending on the space and time. So what we are going to do, we have this dz, we have the Fourier transform of the Green's function, we will try to evaluate this integral. So dz, 1 over 2 pi to the fourth power, d to the 4 of k, minus 1 over k dot k, this term, and e to the minus i k dot z. So the four dimensional k is d k zero and d cube k. And k dot k, k dot k is, what is the k dot k? k dot k over there, so let me write here, k dot k is k0 square minus k dot k or minus k dot k. I will take this as a k square, k0 minus k square, I will take. So then the Green's function will take the following form, minus 1 over 2 pi to the fourth power and d cube k, k dot z is there, so minus of this that will be plus e to the plus i k dot z, which is coming from here. So k dot z is equal to k0 z0 minus k dot z. So there's minus that makes the plus, and other one integral dk0 e to the minus i k0 z0 k0 square minus k square. So this integral have to be taken from minus infinity to plus infinity. And you can see that from the, you can recognize this very easily, this what kind of integral, this should be a complex integral. So residues are com So basically, we have the residues at what? 
k0 at plus k and minus k. So the situation is the following. So if you plot imaginary k0 and real k0, the residuals are what? One residual is k0 at minus k. The other residual is plus k. So you have two possible contours, upper and the lower. So that will, one of them will correspond to the advanced Green's function, the other will be corresponding to a retarded Green's function. So the idea is the following. Since they are in the real, real axis, and you have two, one option, say that a very small lift up the axis a little bit and take the contour above and close at the down or the other one lift down the axis epsilon then epsilon goes to zero and take the contour from here and close in the upper plane. So we have two possibilities. So basically, if you take this and close from the lower plane, lower half, then say that the epsilon goes to zero, the situation is the following. So in the, the contour part, have to be zero when k0 goes to infinity. So what is the z0? So z0 is, what is z0? z0 here, x0 minus x0 prime, because if you put zero here, that will be the difference in the time coordinate, okay? Difference in the time coordinate. So you have two options. If z0 greater than 0, what is the meaning of this? If z0 is greater than 0, that means that the event occur, then we observe. Because this x0 prime is the prime, is the time coordinate of the event. And this is the time coordinate at which we see the event. So when z0 is greater than 0, how about the k0? k0 could be what? This is the vertical is the imaginary k0. If the imaginary part of the k0 is greater than 0, so at which point the uh, Contour will be the zero at the infinity. So, so let me tell you in this way. So let me tell you in this way. So this goes there, and suppose that we have this condition. So, okay. Suppose that this is the contour. So, at x zero goes to infinity. the values of the integral have to be vanish, okay? Then you can evaluate the residue integral. So in here, in the lower plane, what we expect, the exponential should be negative. So basically, we have two options. In here, the imaginary part of x0 is what? Imaginary part of the x0 is less than zero in below, okay, below. And how about, uh, what should be the z0? Is positive or negative? Which one you prefer? You have two options, if I told you. Which one? So imaginary part of k0 is less than zero, okay, in here. If you pick up the z0 is greater than 
zero. Then what you are going to obtain? So imaginary part will be what? I and I with uh, minus. So imaginary part of the K zero will be what? Uh, So let us choose that the Z0 is greater than 0. So let us choose this one. Okay. So Z0 is greater than 0. Imaginary part of K0 is less than 0. So and then what is this? So what is the I times the imaginary part of the K0? Is it positive or negative? So this is I, and here K0 has the, what, imaginary part of the K0 for the lower integral is less than 0. Then what is the, this multiplication? Positive or negative? Positive. positive. Z0 is positive, still positive. There is a minus sign here, therefore overall is negative. That means that when this contour goes to infinity, all integrals will be vanish. Okay? Only surviving integral will be on the real axis. So this choice is the choice of what? When Z0 is greater than 0, that means that the event occurred and we observe, we can call this as a counter for the retarded Green's function. Okay? Actually, this is simple. So if you take the contour from here, go to the upper half, then Z0 should be less than 0. If the Z0 is less than 0, that means that the first we observe, then the event occurs. That is for advanced uh, Green's function. Okay. So basically, we will use this contour, uh, and we know that the, at the radius of the contour goes to infinity, all integral vanish. So then we will left with the only real integral, real part of the integral, and uh, uh, that will be the, uh, the that will be the equal to the uh, residues of the uh, residue integral. So let me take the integral. So we have the contour integral e to the minus i k zero z zero k zero square minus k square. So where is this? Uh, where is this? This part, and this is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity d k0 e to the minus i k0 z0 k0 square minus k square plus plus a contour part semi circular contour part but semi circular contour part goes to zero when the radius goes to infinity okay so basically, we are choosing that the exponential is negative. Real exponential part is negative. So that is equal to minus 2 pi i times the residuals. So minus sign because we are taking the integral in clockwise. So if you remember from the mathematics the methods and so on, if you ch choose the counterclockwise, this is plus 2 pi i times the residues. So let us look at the residues. How many residues we have? We can write this as a k0 minus k, k0 plus k, residues at k and minus k. So if we say that the residue at k, the leftover term, will be that part. If you say that the k0 at minus k, the leftover part of the function in this form. So basically, we can write that the residue integral in the following form. So e to the minus i k0 z0 k0 
k0 plus k when limit uh, k0 goes to k. So, so first this take this part is a residue, so k0 minus k, the length of the over of the function is e to the minus i k that says 0 over k0 plus k, okay? This is for the first residue. And that for the other one, we will take the function as e to the minus k0 z0 over k0 minus k, then uh, k0 goes to minus k. So the other residue will be the following. limit when k0 goes to minus k e to the minus i k0 z0 over k0 minus k. So when k0 goes to k that is 2k, when k0 goes to minus k that is minus 2k. Okay, We have two residues and our integral from minus infinity plus infinity the k0 e to the minus i k0 z0 k0 square minus k square becomes the following form. So that is equal to minus 2 pi i that term and if you put the, this limit k0 as k and k0 as minus k you will obtain what? You will obtain e to the minus i k z0 over 2k and this will be the negative of that that will be e to the minus e to the plus i k z0 so let us control the result so this is k0 is k that is 1 over 2k k0 is k in that case for the other case k0 is minus k that makes plus and k0 is minus k uh, makes the, the minus 2k. So there's a minus sign and plus sign here. So basically this is nothing but this is nothing but uh, take the i down and that will be that will be minus 2 pi sine k z0 over k. So that will be this integral. So take this down as a minus sign, switch the order, then you will have the the minus k is at zero. So one thing we will put by hand is the following. This is valid when what is this in this integral is valid on the condition of what? Z zero is greater than zero. Okay? This is for retarded uh, Green's function. So we can define this by putting here a theta function theta of z0 so that tells you that up to z0 is equal to 0 everything is 0 but when z0 is greater than 0 theta function is 1 okay so we will keep this term here so if you would do the other contour on the upper plane, then you will work for the uh, advanced Green's function. So you will get the same result with the minus z0. Okay, so this contour is uh, chosen for the retarded Green's function. Lift up the axis a little bit by i epsilon, take the contour, find the residuals and evaluate the integral, the contour part goes to zero and therefore you are evaluating the real part of the uh, integral when epsilon goes to zero. So let us continue to the integration. So today we will all do this integral and next time we will apply this result for the calculation of the radiation from the uh, moving and accelerating charge. So let us continue to the integration. So we have minus sign here, we have a minus sign here, and the Green's function will be this one, dz. Now we have the theta function, z0, defines the retarded Green's function because z0 should be greater than 0. And divided by 
2 pi cube, one of the two pi's cancel out because two pi is coming there from here. Minus minus is plus. And two pi to the fourth goes to two pi cube because it, again two pi times the two pi to the fourth cancels out, one of them cancel out. So the leftover term is the d cube k e to the i k does z and sine k z zero over k. So d cube k is k square d k sine theta d theta d phi so in spherical coordinates. So you can automatically see that this integral will bring two pi one of one more two pi because this doesn't have dependence on the phi. K that z will be but k r cosine theta. So now I am going to erase everything only the last part of the integration. I am keeping. So one thing here for the k that z, we can write what uh, i is there k r cosine theta. Take the phi integration, one of the two pi will be cancelled. And dz will be what theta function z0 2 pi coming from the phi integration divided by 2 pi cube and one of the k's will be cancelled k dk and for the sine theta right minus d cosine theta This is for sine theta. Uh, uh, minus d cosine theta is sine theta d theta. Phi integration is already taken. And what else we have? e to the i k r uh, cosine theta and sine k z zero. So this is that. So k square dk sine theta d theta d phi, one of the k's will cancel. And k dot z is k r cosine theta. So we have here k z zero. Now let us continue to integration. So here is triple goes to double integral for dk and d theta, d cosine theta. If you take the d cosine theta integration, you will obtain theta function for the retarded Green's function again, 2 pi square. Again, one of the pi's, two pi's cancel. And dk integration. So uh, integration element dk for this integral, we will have what? We have a k factor here. And that integration with respect to the cosine theta lowers down to the i as a i k r. And we have sine k z zero here. And we have the exponential i k r cosine theta. Limits of the cosine theta goes from minus one to plus one. So this will be canceled case will be cancelled and this station is the following theta z0 over 2 pi square we left over var r r is there and let us put 1 dk 
and the limits of this cosine theta 1 and minus 1 gives us e to the ikr minus e to the minus ikr. So this is 1 and minus for cosine theta. Here we have a 2, sorry, i. So I multiply by 2, divide by 2, but actually I not need it in our calculations. So the other part is the sine k z0, sine k z0 is e to the i k z0 minus minus e to the i k z0 over 2i. So I put multiply by 2 by divide by 2. So basically this is sine kr. And this is sine kz0. So uh, now I'll take this integral. So I am carrying the steps because we will see some interesting things. So I don't want to write this. This is the uh, Green's function and apply the Green's function. So doing the steps, we are seeing them some, some uh, important things. We will reach to the definition of the delta function soon. So let us continue the calculation. So from here, you will see that uh, in spherical coordinates, we said that uh, this integral uh, have to be taken 0 to infinity. And then this is all OK. I go up and calculate the elements of this. Then we can do a break. dz is theta function of z0 divided by 2 pi square. Why 2 pi square? Because this is 4 and 2 is cancel one of them. We have 1 over r. And 0 to infinity decay. And let me do the integration, uh, so multiplication. I and I is minus. I wrote is a plus. Therefore, I will pick up first the minus. So which is the minus term first? So this one. This is minus. This is minus. That is plus. So I will take this term as first. Uh, that will be decay. Decay uh, times this multiplication will be plus e to the i z0 minus r k. This is the multiplication of this. z0 minus r minus 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 plus. And here we have two cancels, but we have two more twos. That makes eight. Or this will be canceled. This is four and eight. So here you have the eight. And let us look at the other one. Other one is this. Other multiplication. Let me pick up this one. This is the zero plus r positive, but i and i is negative, so that will be minus e to the i z zero plus r k and close the parentheses and do the other calculation. So for the other calculation, so where I have to write this, let me write here. So this hole is 
multiplying by this stuff and we have the zero to infinity decay so let us look at this multiplication now that is minus that zero plus r i and i minus but this is minus that is plus so that is decay e to the minus e to the i minus z0 plus r k and what which term is left oh. so the other term is this I minus and minus this one so the final term is this multiply this so this is minus and this is minus and here minus minus is plus and this is minus so that will be e to the i minus this zero minus r k this term so so why I did this calculation because I will combine these integrals very easy format so the rest will be much more easy so it seems to be everything is correct this is minus this is minus exponentials minus and uh, R, the, this is minus minus plus i and i is minus and how about that other term minus that zero plus r okay that's okay so why I did this as you see that there are four terms long but they could be combined into the single so one thing you can do for that one you can do for that one is the following you can you can take the integral from infinity to zero with multiplying with minus okay you can change the limits then you can tell another thing let dk goes to k goes to minus k okay k goes to minus k so if you do the second thing So what will happen to above exponential i minus z zero plus r minus k e to the i minus z zero minus r minus k minus and minus is plus and how about this one? So minus and minus is plus and so actually so if you say that k goes to minus dk so this goes to the minus infinity so basically this term is what this minus and minus is plus and this is minus and that is this zero plus r zero that term and for this piece that is nothing but this zero minus r that piece okay so you can combine the integral So if you combine the integral, you will have a nice format that tell us a lot of to us. Theta function of z zero eight pi square r minus infinity to plus infinity d k and the exponential terms e to the i z0 minus r k e to the z0 plus r k this is the format we have now the situation is the following 
R is the difference between the space position of the event and us magnitude okay and z0 is equivalent to uh, what z0 is the difference between the time coordinate of the event is, uh, with, uh, with observation point and the event let's say so basically if z0 greater than 0 the, our choice and r is greater than zero and the integral is taken from minus infinity to the plus infinity tells you that second integral never be zero because this is the definition of the delta function delta function of z zero minus r the other is the definition of the delta function of z zero plus r so basically for these are greater than zero, this integral will be zero all the times. Because this is greater than zero, this is greater than zero, there is no any root. Okay? So that then you will obtain the following. So if say zero is greater than zero and r is all all the times is greater than zero, second integral is zero all the times, and we can obtain the retarded Green's function as x minus x prime in an open form theta function of x0 minus x0 prime so z0 is x0 minus x0 prime divided by eight pi square r and the first integral is nothing but delta function of x0 minus x0 prime minus r times 2 pi. So this will be canceled and that will be 4 pi. So this is coming from the first integral. So that is equal to, that is equal to theta function x0 minus x0 prime 4 pi r and the delta function x0 minus x0 prime minus r and this is nothing but z0 okay and if you go to the opposite case so in that case this what is this case? So all the times event is earlier, we observe later is a time coordinate. So this is for retarded Green's function. And if you do for the advanced one, then for the advanced one, what is this? So if you work before the advanced Green's function, what is the condition for this zero for the advanced Green's function? For advanced Green's function, the condition for this zero for the advanced Green's function is what? The opposite. Okay? So Z0 is what? Less than zero. Z0 is less than zero. Means that the what? Uh, we first see then the events occur. Okay, so then which which integral will be survive? Which integral will be survive? This will be survive because the zero is less than zero minus r. R is always positive, so this is totally is negative. So there is no root for the delta function, but here. This is negative, this is positive, then you can obtain that the advanced Green's function in the following form. Theta minus x0 minus x0 prime over 4 pi r delta x minus x0 prime plus r. 
because Z0 is bus X0 minus X0 prime. This is negative, therefore this is the positive as a argument of the theta function is positive. So uh, since the Z0 is negative and only contribution comes from the second part of the integral. So this is okay, but we will put this Green's function in a more nice form, in an invariant form. So here we have the Z0 minus R and here we have the Z0 plus R. From time to time that change. So we will put these things in the more nice format. So I have maybe 15, 20 minutes. So let me go and then finish for today, okay? So, so because the rest will be much more easy. So I am erasing everything, only leaving the Green's functions. And here I did not write, but you already know that the definition of the uh, Green's function, uh, sorry, delta function. So the delta function which I use here is nothing but, the, yeah, this is one. dk to the e to the a i z0 minus r times k integration dk is the definition of the delta function times 2 pi. Okay, okay. Now the next thing, we can put the is Green's functions in a more appropriate form. So now consider the following. Consider that this delta function, x minus x prime square. So that is equal to delta function of x zero minus x0 prime square minus x minus x prime square. So I am trying to put this delta functions in the Green's function in a more nice form. So this is the, what is this? length of the x minus x prime, simple. So basically, x minus x prime is r square, okay, in space, in the distance of the space coordinates. So we can write this delta function of x zero minus x0 prime minus r, x0 minus x0 prime plus r, okay? This is the first terms, that is the square minus the r square, they are the same, okay? So now there's a nice property of the delta function uh, you can look at the appendix of the Gazarovich book for quantum physics, or, or I can di distribute this because I don't want to spend the time, that property of the delta function. So this multiplication could be written as 1 over 2R delta function of x0 minus x0 plus r plus delta function of x0 minus x0 prime. So one of them is minus plus r. And
and what are those things what are those things this is the piece used in the retarded delta function okay this piece is used in the retarded Green's function and the other piece is used in the advanced Green's function so for the retarded Green's function for the retarded Green's function instead of this piece you can write 2r times this okay because this doesn't contribute Z0 is positive, R is positive, therefore this delta function is all the times gives you to zero if you multiply any function. So basically the retarded Green's function could be written as multiply this to the 2R, this 2R, 2R over 4 pi R will left you only 1 over 2 pi theta function of x0 minus x0 prime delta function of delta function of x minus x prime square now can you see something about the Green's function is it invariant now this piece is invariant this is the length of the for difference of the four vector theta is not invariant but it will be all the times positive so if you add this function to the any solution that will be invariant because this piece is invariant this is not invariant but this is all the times is greater than zero so the contribution will comes from this and if you write the same thing for the advanced Green's function this part then the advanced part advanced Green's function will have the following form so basically we will use this Green's functions for the calculation of the radiation from the accelerated charge so that is x0 prime minus x0 so I switch the order and the rest is the x minus x prime square so so we have two presentation of the Green's function for the retarded and advanced in an invariant form if you add this to the any function and integrate this this Green's function will give you a result on the condition of what? x minus x prime square equal to what? 0. When the x minus x prime square equal to 0, at the light cone. Okay, all connections with the source and the radiation and with us will be the light cone. One it will be the earlier, one will be the later, one will be the retarded, the other will be the uh, advanced. Green's function. So let us write the solution now. So what is the solution? Solution for four potential has what is the convolution between the Green's function with the source. integrated four dimensional volume element and that could be also for the advanced Green's function x minus x prime x minus x prime x minus x prime in both cases. So this is the format of the solution. Okay, you know that the Green's function convolve with the source and find the solution, and it is a four potential. But in general, you will have a solution for the homogeneous part of the what 
uh, wave equation. So that is expressed as a one of them is called as an incoming field of the radiation and the other is called as an outgoing field of the four potential. These are coming from the uh, homogeneous part of the solutions. So basically there is one difficulty here for the four potential. I am not going to get into detail. You can talk with the people working on the field theory or you can look at the Dirac's paper uh, 1938. So in time, if you pick up this, there is no symmetry because this is well it is z0 is greater than 0 and the other was well it when z0 is less than 0. So in time coordinate there is no symmetry. So Dirac proposed that the radiating fields of the four potential is the difference of these two four potentials. So that is the difference of the outcoming and incoming potentials difference 4 pi over c d to the 4 x prime d x minus x prime j current density x prime and d here is called as a the difference between the retarded and the advanced. So this is the proposal of the Dirac. So you can look at the papers 1938. So he is discussing about this, or you can go to the theoreticians and talk about that. Okay. So basically, in for the radiation for potentials. Since there is no symmetry in these Green's functions in the time coordinate, he mixed this, these Green's functions and they achieve the symmetry. But in our applications, we are not going to use this. We will just use for the radiating fields, retarded Green's function convolved with the four current density and then we will calculate that the four potential. Once we calculate the four potential, we will calculate what? field strength tensor and the fields. So before stopping, let me talk about that the basic step we will use for the radiation for the moving charge particle. We will need what? Current density, four current density, four current density of the moving single charge then we can calculate that the four potential. Okay, so let me write that the current density of the moving charge particle. Then we can calculate the four potential next time. So where we are going to, four potential will be the linear Wickard potentials. So if there is a single charge, which is moving, you can write that the charge density in space and time is a delta function x minus r of t. If you integrate through the volume, you will find it charge. Okay, that is trivial. And r, so v of t, this is not a proper time, it's an ordinary time, that is nothing but dr over dt. And the current density of the moving single charge is the nothing but the charge times the velocity. Velocity depends on time. 
times the delta function at that location. So if you, if you integrate through the volume, then you will obtain E times V. So these are the charge density and the current density of the moving charge. Okay. So it is valid at the integration through the volume and then the integration through the volume give you the charge integration of the through the volume of the current density that will give you the charge times the velocity that is the current density. We can express this for the purposes of the calculation of the four potential as a four current density and the, that expression in the following form J alpha of X could be expressed EC D tau U alpha tau and four dimensional X minus R of tau tau is the proper time so next thing I will show you that in this indeed this presentation is the presentation of the uh, charge density and current density of the moving charge so, so at this point I can erase this part we will use this later next time so let us calculate that the J0 for example, J0. So that is equal to EC D tau U0 and four dimensional delta function is delta X0 minus delta X0 prime and the rest is delta x minus r of proper time. So I know that this is equal to d tau is equal to dt over Lorentz factor. U0 is zero component of the four velocity that is gamma c and that is and this part is c t minus c t prime delta function of x minus r of tau and gamma's cancel and if you take the integral of d c t then you will obtain but when ct is equal to ct prime that will be 1 and your result will be will be what j0 will be what c times e times delta function of x r and what is this this is nothing but this piece is the charge density part multiplied by C that is nothing but C rho. Okay? And if you do this for the I component, I123, then you will obtain the following. So EC you have and D tau is DT over gamma and ui is gamma vi then you have delta ct minus ct prime delta x minus r of tau so then gammas will be cancelled and if you take the ct c, d c times d integral so like this then you will obtain that the gi is what 
charge times the R component times delta X minus R. And this is the current density part of the in ordinary space. So basically this presentation is the presentation of the four current density for the moving single charge. Then we will take this convolve with the Green's function, retarded Green's function, then we will calculate it the four potential. Okay. Okay, this is okay for today.